Welcome YouTube. The video you're about to see is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now you may notice that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. In this video, I'm going to be looking at an episode of Crow 777 Radio. Now, I got to say, I've been following this guy, listening to his stuff on and off for years. At least four or five, maybe even six years. Since before I found out about correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Um, I did maintain a membership at his website for a couple years. Um, big fan of what the guy's trying to do, of his character, the way he presents things is no nonsense, uh, type of conveyance. I really like it. He does a lot of good stuff on, uh, health, wellness, um, and he does delve into legalities and things about the system that don't make sense. I know that he's had trouble on YouTube that uh, his his most famous video, I think, is the one with the lunar wave, where he was he was um, yeah telescope and was looking at the lunar surface, and he found like a like when you're watching an old TV or a, a, a VHS tape and you see that line like come down the screen like this. Uh, he saw that on the moon just looking through the telescope. He caught that. As if it was a projection or something. I, I'm just guessing as to, I don't know what it is. Um, but that, that's what he's most famous for, pretty much. And I guess he had some problems with YouTube. And this is crazy. I'll just put this out here, you know, for the best of my knowledge. His theme song, his original theme song, which was so cool. I don't know who did it. I don't know if he did it or if his friend Jason Lengren did it for him. It was a great song, but I guess someone else took his music and copyrighted it to themselves on YouTube, and then he couldn't use his own music anymore because someone literally stole it from him. Unreal, the audacity and nastiness of some people out there. And trust me, when I know about nasty people who throw copyright strikes at you for frivolous reasons... If you know, you know. So anyways, I'm not trying to cause him any problems by using his video or anything. The thing I'm reacting to is the one hour portion, which I'm sure I'm not going to look at the whole hour, but it's the free portion of his podcast from Crow 777 Radio website. And he's going to be talking with an individual that I've never heard of. And I guess they're going to be talking about the birth certificate and things like that, and I'm just going to look at it, as always, through the lens of correct sentence structure, and share my thoughts with you. So let's start out in uh, with your introduction, which I love the introduction. I mean, I don't think he has ever not began a show with, hey man, it's blah, 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 I don't think, let's see if he does it here. 
All right, man. Welcome to Pro Triple Seven right, Radio. Man, this is episode is. 493. Jason Lingren is with me, and Sui Generis Sui comes Generis. again. He's been with us on a number of episodes. Uh, most of the time, this is about what happens at birth, uh, identity, and things like that. By the time this goes live, we'll probably list out the episodes he's been on. We've got a lot to get through, so welcome, Jason. And a very cool good morning. All right. Welcome, Sui. Thank you. Nice to be back. How are you? Uh, we're, we're good. So we've had a couple people on and we know you've been working with others. Do you want to give any heads up on where we're about to go or do you want to just jump in? Uh, no, let's just go. I guess the topic is in general known to people who listen, who have the ears to hear, so to speak. So, All right, let's pick up. So we're working from your outline and we have a couple documents. I'm not sure if these will be made available to everyone. We'll broach that when we need to. But what's been happening? Real quick. Because this is what I do. I, I wanted to bring up the term identity that they're using, okay? I just looked it up on my phone as I'm listening. You see, identity comes from 1600, sameness, oneness, state of being, the same. 14th century from French, identite, identite sameness, ultimately from Latin, idem, the same, see, idem, okay? So I'm going to look up idem, the same, used to avoid repetition in writing Latin, literally the same, from id, it, that one, from Proto-Indo-European pronominal stem I see yawn plus demonstrative or demonstrative suffix dem. So we're looking at yawn plus dem. Yawn comes from gion, which means that over there. Proto-Indo-European pronominal stem I. The same, that one. Shortening of yonder. So the point I'm making and bringing this up when you're looking at suffix dem uh, bringing up the meanings of those words identity is non-tangible contract when you look at what I just showed you there. Is literally non-tangible contract, plus it's a vowel in front of a consonant, which means no contract. So it's even <laughs> less tangible than a non-tangible word would be. Identity. That's why I use the word credential. A lot of correspondence. So I've been in touch with various levels of the official government, if you want trying to get confirmation on the findings that we have, local government and also internationally. So this guy has been trying to, has been contacting various levels of governments all over the earth, trying to perhaps verify the findings that they have or to get information, to get data on the things that they're interested in. That's, that's what I'm... Uh, cognizing what he's saying here and very interesting reactions because and let's say let's let's say right from the start that the the, the correspondence is in the thousands of of emails back and forth now and there are like hundreds of officials involved in this uh, dialogue not not all together but uh, individually you know in different uh, threads if you want so basically what you're doing is you're trying to get the officials of the world to, I don't know, is admit the right word, what happens, or are you simply still trying to define what happens when all that paperwork is generated at, at a new birth? No, so the, the paperwork is is becoming very clear now, and we'll, we'll talk about that. The paperwork is actually evidence of what they did, if you know how to read it correctly. So it's it's proof. The problem is, is that We'll, we'll also talk about is that people who never challenge the assumptions they have in their own 
work opposition. They cannot grasp what it means to challenge the assumptions that they have taken for granted. So. Okay, so let's look at what, what was just presented here. Um, when you take it further than what this guy is saying, this guy is talking about when you look at the paperwork correctly, it becomes evidence. Now, what he means by correctly and what I mean by correctly are two different things. First of all, correctly is non-tangible contract because of the poison suffix ly. So I would use correct. Wouldn't have the suffix on there. I realize they're speaking in plain English and they don't know or at least have never mentioned correct sentence structure, communication, policy, syntax, grammar, as far as I know, which this is a good spot to bring up the fact that when I was a member of Crow's website, I had at times mentioned correct sentence structure, communication, policy, syntax, grammar, but Crow, whatever his real correct name is, never responded, never showed any interest in it at all. Um, I know other people that have brought it up to him, and he just doesn't address it at all that I've seen. I mean, he has no interest in quantum grammar, correct sentence structure, communication, parse syntax grammar, although he does claim to have an interest in becoming free or getting more free or free of the system or being able to protect himself and his loved ones and get away, you know, uh, uh, not be affected by mandates or, or things like that. Um, yet he will not address or even acknowledge quantum grammar. Now, that could be for several reasons. I mean, I could speculate on it that he doesn't know about it. He has no idea about it. So he just doesn't want to touch it. Or someone that he's spoken to in those common law circles that he runs in has spoken ill of it. And so he just dismisses it out of hand just because um, of what someone else told him about it. And 10 times out of 10, if someone badmouths quantum grammar, it means they themselves don't know jack about it. All right? Guaranteed. 100%. I will stand behind that. You show me someone that badmouths it, that has closure on it, and <laughs> I'll retract my statement. Uh, or... And here's the third option. He has watched a Russell J. Gould video and that just completely turned him off to it, which is a good chance that that, that happened because, I mean, you look, I mean, if you're looking for someone to be a diplomatic personality to represent the quantum grammar construct, and then you look at someone like, Russell J. Gould, is that someone that's a good repre representative, to use a fiction word, uh, of, of the technology? Is that someone you would trust? Is that someone that makes sense to you? I, I mean, from an objective point of view, looking at it from the outside, looking at how chaotic and, and crazy and sort of like professional wrestling WWE style videos that he makes at times... I can see how that would turn someone with the intelligence level of Crow off to the grammar technology entirely. Or maybe he's seen Mark Lowercase K stuff. And uh, Crow, as far as I can see, has a very good uh, bullshit detector. And probably for both Russell and Mark, he, he could see that right away. And so because of those personalities, he just totally dismisses the technology. And of course, I'm not well known enough to uh, make any kind of dent in someone like that psyche. Um, so it is what it is, but it has been mentioned in his forum and in his private websites and stuff, and he just has never acknowledged it. To bring it back to what they're talking about here, they're talking about looking at things through the lens of what they feel is correct in the fiction, which... When you really think about it, see, it's hard for me to think about it in any other way other than through the lens of correct sentence structure, because it's all fiction to me. It's all fiction. The birth certificate was created not by you, not by me, not by your mom and pa, not by my mom and pa, not by their mom and pa. 
It was created by a government employee. Okay? Nothing to do with us other than the fact that they use it as shadow or chattel. How do you say that word? Traded as a commodity or whatever on a stock market. And I have proven that in my certificate of birth video that I did several years ago where I traced the continuance of evidence from the QR code that was on the birth certificate or certificate of birth that I had, the fiction certificate of birth. It's not my certificate of birth, okay? I didn't have anything to do with it. I didn't autograph it. I didn't thumbprint it, not willingly anyways. Uh, it was not created by me. It wasn't created by my parents. Nothing to do with me. That name has nothing to do with me. So just pointing that out. So um, it's kind of the same thing as in any um, scientific community when you approach it this way. So you come in and you say, okay, um, you have this, this system that you suppose everybody believes in. And then when someone starts to question, dig, first of all, dig out the assumptions that you rely on and then question them. And then when the assumptions cannot be proven to be verifiable, uh, then, you know, all that uh, boo-ha-ha -ha starts. And it leads to all of the same reactions, by the way. It leads to silence. It leads to ridicule. It leads to uh, dismissive replies, knee-jerk reactions. Same thing all happens that. But, um, when correct sentence structure is introduced into a scenario. Usually those are the knee-jerk reactions. And the same can go with the fiction system. The same could go if this were presented to this, you know, the guy who's speaking. If I presented quantum grammar to him at first, it would probably create a knee-jerk reaction that he's talking to that he got from the fiction system itself. Because... For some reason, the unknown or things that people don't have closure on, they do present knee-jerk reactions, either out of fear, mistrust, and they usually get dismissive or even condescending about it. And the one uh, common thread, of course, as, as we know, is that they cannot prove the assumptions if the assumptions are incorrect. Assumptions now, even at this a couple of themselves cannot be proven because there are assumptions. If you present something as a fact and you have closure on that fact, at no point in time is it ever an assumption. That's why there can never be an argument when facts are present. The only time there's argument is when assumptions, presumptions, and opinions are there. Uh, i.e., there's no closure. When there's no closure, there's argument. When there's closure, there can be no argument. Here's yeah. proverbially poking the bear. Has anyone <laughs> taken notice yet? Yeah. So there are a lot of good letters going back and forth. Some of them be, have, have been mentioned. By the way, the, the document, that the Dreamhouse document, that we're going to talk about. Yep. It's not one of the letters that has been sort of discussed. I think Kurt mentioned a letter that I wrote, but that's not the one. He, he was talking about another a letter. Anyways, there has been a lot of replies, and that's a very good thing. So basically, when you get a reply to questions at this level, they are always evidence. They are evidence of ignorance, poorly done orientation to your job, <laughs> or, or they are evidence of um, somebody trying to wiggle out of something, or even silence, as people you know, educated in law would know, is also evidence of something. At least, um, if nothing else, you can draw, uh, uh, you, you can take some uh, and, and uh, draw some uh, adverse inference from it. So, you know, if somebody doesn't reply, it, the silence means something. So the interaction that I think we were talking about last time 
is a very good thing to do. You have to get in touch with these people because through the interaction, you will get the confirmation that they okay. don't know. So what he's basically saying is there is through the interactions of the letters, he calls them letters, they're emails, digital communications that he sent to different entities and different governments throughout the world or different uh, governmental agencies, hundreds of letters that he's gotten responses back or no responses. And through these responses or no responses, you gain evidence towards whatever goal that he had in mind that he was with the vision of reaching. For me, none of this really matters. Like, for me, this makes not one bit of difference to what I do. Because I'm not worried about or thinking about what a fiction entity is going to do next. Because number one, you can try to predict it if you want to. But one thing you can be sure of, it's going to be BS. <laughs> when you have correct sentence structure on your side, when you have closure on this grammar and you can use it and pull it out of your pocket as a tangible thing to use with confidence that you know it's going to perform again and again and again and again, you don't need to worry about what the fiction is doing. Now, if you're interested in history, if you're interested in learning why perhaps some entities made the system the way they made it, the fiction system, and do things the way they do them, or maybe trace it back to who originated it or how it's perpetrated and who's doing the perpetration, that's entirely different. I mean, that's that, that would be a personal journey. And you would have to have a lot of time on your hands to do that. Most people I know are just trying to get through the day-to-day -day survival, hand-to-mouth, uh, just trying to protect themselves and their families. They don't have time to do what this guy's doing. That's why we have guys like this. He's in a position to do that. Just like me, I'm in a position to teach correct sentence structure. It's what I do. I don't do anything else. It's It's... My function, my purpose is to do this and to do it under a very specific set of rules and terms and conditions that I do not deviate from. And I personally just don't have the now space to do what this guy's doing. Number one, because I'm not really interested in it like in a, in a thirsty for knowledge type of thing. I could care less what the fiction's doing, but it does interest me to the point where, huh, that's good to know. Not that it affects anything that I do in my navigation. It would not affect me one way or the other as to how I carry myself, how I write my contracts, or anything like that. But it's just something curious, you know, as a guy that's sometimes curious in conspiracy theories and things like that. Um, yeah, it is interesting from that point. But if you're going to learn correct sentence structure, if you're with the volition of doing that and using it in your life, this, what he's talking about right now, doesn't really have any bearing on it. They cannot reply, they cannot answer these fundamental questions. And th those replies, which do not address the questions, are evidence. It's evidence confirming that what we have found is correct. All right, so let's let's catch people up. So basically, this is about the status of a human being and what happens, and all the documentation and the presumptions are made at the birth of a new baby. <clears throat> What's going on here is we're about to get into letters and conversations that Swee has engaged in with the official world to try to prove what he already knows is true. I guess I'll be bold and say it like that, Swee. What's going on here is when you are born, assumptions are made. Apparently they are attempting to get your tacit consent, okay. but they're failing to do what so. What Crow just said there surprises me that this would come out of that guy's mouth. He just said, when you're born, there's assumptions being made and they are trying to get your tacit agreement. Crow777 and anyone else out there watching this, how can you get 
an infant's consent for anything. That makes absolutely less than zero sense to me, what just came out of his mouth. There is no tacit agreement. Well, I mean, technically you could say it's tacit agreement because the infant cannot speak. It cannot nod yes or no. It can't do anything like that. It has no method of communicating other than crying or not crying, hungry, not hungry, cold, warm, comfort, discomfort. That's all pretty much an infant's life is for a pretty good uh, stretch of now space. So there's no way any consent is ever could ever be made. That is the parent's accountability or responsibility. It's up to the parents to make choices for their child, for their infant, okay? It's the parents that do it, not the infant. And then there's this sort of, I don't know if you want to say it, like the grandfathering in into the fiction system where the child grows up and then when they reach the age of 18, now to go from the birth certificate bill of the lading into the adult world, they now have to register for selective service. At least over here in past tense United States is one way of keeping them locked in to that system. That's one way. You don't have to do that. Um... Well, I'm not even going to go into that. But in any case, babies can't consent to anything, Crow. And it doesn't matter. So they act like they've got your tacit consent anyhow. But what Sui is pointing out here is even the people in the chain of custody or the authorities have little idea of the systems. So let's get into the letters, Sui. Okay. Well, the letters, since I'm not sharing them, except with some people, or let's put it this way, they're not publicly available. That's interesting. I have to me, that's a red flag as far as the SWE guy goes. Why wouldn't the letters be publicly available? If this is something for the good of everyone, why wouldn't these letters be publicly available? Unless there's some sort of danger inherent in it. Unless someone's family or life or livelihood is in danger by sharing a letter. But even so, if you, you wouldn't even share it in the private then either, would you? Unless it's a money-making operation. Unless it's a money-making scheme. Could be. Or, okay, that's the, I'm kind of bringing a negativity into that let, let's put a positivity on it so we can balance it out with rule one, rule equal. Maybe he doesn't want to share the letter simply because he doesn't want people to go off using these letters on their own without having any basis of knowledge of what they're doing because then they could get into trouble. Now that I think about it, knowing the character of Crow 777, I, I think the last one is probably the most likely scenario that they just don't want people to get into trouble going off half-cocked half using these letters that this guy, who's obviously super intelligent about these matters, super knowledgeable, uh, you, you got to have a knowledge level. It's kind of like correct sentence structure. Um, why I talk about, you know, if you want to learn about C pass C treaty, for example, and use that in your navigations, I'm more than happy to help you with it on the condition that you first learn the grammar and get closure on the grammar, and I can certify that you know the grammar, then I'd be more than happy to teach you. But I'm not going to just go out in the public and teach it because I don't know what people know, and they can just get into trouble using it if they don't have closure on it. And I don't want people getting into trouble because they go off ignorant of what it is they're getting into and made them publicly avail available. I've sent them to some people's private records. Um, I, I'm not 
going to share them at this time, but I can mention who I who I've been in correspondence with, and of course, there's a lot of lot of people we've talked about them. There's like huge amount of church officials and and so on, international and local government officials, Vatican directly, the Eastern Orthodox Church, Schwab Foundation, which is the foundation of uh, Klaus Schwab some other foundations which are under the UN directly, some royal families Charles directly. Charles Schwab, huh? Just as a side note, on a personal note, um, I used to be employed at a very large private club lifestyle corporation in the Southwest. They used to hold a huge golf tournament called the Charles Schwab Cup. I still have uh, collared golf shirts um, with Charles Schwab Cup on them. I worked many, many, many 14-hour days getting ready for that guy's golf tournament. So the correspondence is there. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm making it known that the structure of how this works is known to us. You can read it from their own papers, uh, their own records uh, are evidence of it. And what you can derive from them is that there's, there's this picture of false reality that that creates, oh, let's, let's start, but you mentioned the hospital and we've, we've talked about this before. So this is how, this is how the, the narrative is created. Right from the moment, of the, the delivery event, they start creating their documents, which create a narrative, which create a story a paper trail. of something having happened. And notice, it's always them who create the record. So what we've seen, we've seen now, we've got it on, you know, official replies and everything. That those pa that paperwork from the hospital, from the church leading up to the population register and then eventually from there leading up to any id people might be carrying it's it's their creation it's their i've been paperwork. saying this for years ladies and gentlemen the same thing that this guy's saying i've been saying since 2018. none of that stuff is mine not a birth certificate not a driving license nothing not a passport nothing it's not created by the parents. It's not created by the one who it is supposed to be describing. It's mm -hmm. all their documentation. So it's their claim. Now, there's a couple Thank of problems you. with that. Um, first problem is that obviously they are just bystanders, stand, st uh, standers in that process. So basically, even the hospital, even the hospital employees. They are just making observations and then they create paperwork Witnesses. which they say to certify. And then that paperwork starts a paper trade, which then ends up becoming uh, what is called as the registered person or maybe more commonly known as the citizen. And then, uh, you know, all these ID cards get sent out and then people take those and they start identifying as that. Where have you heard that creation. before, ladies and gentlemen? Identifying as that creation, the creation of that paperwork. What is the most recent generation? What do they talk about? Identifying as if you were born a male, you can now identify as a female. You can identify as a toaster. You can identify as a lamp, whatever it is you want to do. It's the same basic principle. So let me just let me just make this clear. I'm sorry for interrupting. So basically, all the certification, all the ID cards, that's all based on a fiction, on something that doesn't exist. And what you've just said, correct me if I blow this, sweet is that people are handed these things. And because we've been so trained 
into how society works, we begin to identify that our yes. ID is somehow identity us. is non-tangible contract. It doesn't even exist. So the depth of the modification is so deep, it can boggles one mind, one's mind if one goes down this rabbit hole. But that ID is a fiction. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've been over and over this, but, right. but uh, the way it's done is that you're celebrating the birthday. But the birthday, by definition, is not the moment when anything new living this is true. was created. This is true. That is why on my live life claim, my claim of the live life, I don't claim the day where I was physically birthed into this physical domain. I claim my life force from the point of conception of creation. And I claim all parts of that vessel in my live life claim. Now the event, it did happen where, you know, the child leaves the mother's vessel and becomes a solo vessel, comes out through the merit into the maritime waters or however you want to say it, into the physical domain. That's what they're talking about. But they create a paper entity, identity, however you want to say it. Um, and it's all based upon assumption presumption. It's not. It, and it's provable. Nothing living was created on that birthday. The only thing was create, that was created on that birthday was a register entry, which becomes a legal entity. That is true. I think I've heard about enough here, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to see the whole episode, I'll leave a link to it in the description of the video. It is very interesting if you're interested in going down those types of pathways to learn about the ins and outs of the fiction system. Now, I also, when I began learning correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar in 2017, I did follow some of these pathways that were introduced to me, such as the Sestake trust 1666 and all these types of things i started reading up a little bit on those types of things but i immediately began with the sensation that those things are superfluous they're, they're irrelevant to what i wanted to do in this now space now i don't care about bankruptcies of fiction corporations countries whatever it is I could give two craps about that the only thing that matters to me is the right here and the right now and what I can do about it. What happened in the past is the past. Now, you can learn from the past, of course. But to me, in my mind, the way I think, in a, what I like to think of as a very practical manner of navigation, is all I need to know is correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. I don't need to know statutes, codes, titles, rules, regulations, laws, legalities. None of that is necessary when you have closure on the grammar. Because just like these guys said, these papers, this paper trail of evidence of a deception were created by someone else. So that means that someone else is the author which means that they have authority over that paperwork. That's the whole point of correct sentence structure. You learn your own grammar, create your own documents with you as the author and authority, live life claim, see past sea treaty, fate rift, volition claim, um, port authority claim, whatever claims you want to make. But you become the author. You're the authority of them, not them. You are. That is... The whole point of this, where you have a birth certificate in the fiction, a live life claim in the fact, a passport in the fiction, a C pass C treaty in the fact, and you are the authority of your facts. That's why it's so important to get closure on the grammar so that you can teach it to someone else who wants to contract with you.
And if they don't want to contract with you, Dasvidaniya, see ya. And that's what you say to the fiction. Go on a little vacation. Stay away from me. And they most likely will if you have closure under grammar. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.